in radio or on stage, you you will pay the price for it. And I got to be very careful right now. With the book coming out, I'm cutting back on some of the things I thought I would be doing. I just had to cut back on them. I don't want to go through the list now, but I, it won't affect you one way or the other. I want to do the radio show as long as God gives me the energy to do it. And as long as I have a podium to do it, I will do it. I'm not ready to, to do nothing and sit around, and that's all. I don't want to be the guy sitting in a garage working on a wood project listening to someone else. I don't want to be the guy driving around in the middle of the day with nothing to do, listening to someone on radio saying I agree with them. I want to be the guy that they listen to, as I have been for 21 years. And I am not willing to give this up quite yet. And I'm telling you right now, somebody up there likes me, or I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be here for 21 years. Every impediment known to mankind was thrown in my way. From the day I began in radio, people at that station try to stop me. They try to stop me on KGO. They try to stop me in the elevators. You don't know what I went through. You don't know how vicious the so-called nice people are. You don't know how vicious nice people really are underneath that niceness. But lucky for me, um, let's put it to you this way. Um, I was born very poor. I'm not boasting about it. I wish I had been born rich. I, I wish that uh, I had Donald Trump's money. I wish I lived on the other side of the tracks. I'm not glorifying my poverty. I mean, everyone likes things it's fashionable to glorify poverty. I hated it. All the years I walked in the slush to the bus in Queens to take a job after school, I hated it. I didn't want to do it. I had to do it. I, want, I, didn't, want to, I didn't want to go do that. Every Saturday and Sunday that I had to go to work in my father's store doing disgusting, dirty work, I didn't want to go. I wanted to play with my friends and hang out. I wanted to do what they did. But I couldn't do it. He didn't want me to do it. He said it would spoil me. I've been going on a long time. I've been working too long. And some days I say I don't want to work anymore. I'm actually reaching the point where I'm saying, you know what, maybe it's time to just... You know, let it go after this book or something like that. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm just, I'm feeling burned out. I'm reaching that point because I have never, ever seen a country committing suicide. I'm, Lemmings running off a cliff is the only image that works for me. When you see a low life street rat like Bernie Sanders, a nobody, a 1930s caricature of a communist street rabble rouser on a soapbox in Union Square getting this much attention, it's a nation of lemmings going off a cliff. That's all I can think of. So if you see a tide of rats running over a cliff, the answer is get out of their way, man, or they'll pull you over with them. See? That's what I think sometimes. Sometimes I think that's the bigger wisdom. But I don't think I'll do that. It's just too ingrained in me to stand there and fight and stay on the air and get up every day through thick and through thin, no matter what's bothering me on my mind or my soul. I still do it, as hard as it is for me and as hard as it is for the guys that I work with because it's getting very hard because the news is so horrible. <laughs> I, you know, I, it's hard to tell you this in any other way. I'm telling you the news is so awful. The refugee crisis is the seminal moment in our lives, and it was created by Hillary Clinton. And what's astonishing to me is how she gets away with it. Like this Thursday, we're supposedly going to be hearing about her email garbage. Well, that's important. And I, I wish Trey Gowdy gets to the truth. I want to know the truth. I want to know what's in those missing emails. But I, I can tell you right now, she is so powerful. She, in fact, is so all-powerful. The machine behind her, she owns the FBI, for example, who took the emails. Now, do you think that her FBI is going to help people get to the truth? I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe a miracle will happen. Let's say, the, dealing with that for one more minute, let's just have a fantasy together. Let's have a fantasy together. Let's say that during the hearings we find out that Hillary did something that violated the law while she was in the State Department and she has to go to prison. What is that going to do? Make us happy? It's not going to make me happy. I have nothing against Hillary Clinton. I don't even know her. I think she's a terrible human being. I think we had eight years of the Clintons and eight years is more than enough. And I think we need a, new, a change in America. It's as simple as that. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to get to the bottom of what were in those emails. I hope they do. See? Okay, so that's that. Thursday, that's coming up. 855-407-282. Let's go to Jeremiah on WABC. Line number eight. Welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. You are the modern-day Jeremiah, Noah, Jonah, 
and uh, all the other prophets put together. I know yesterday you uh, you really were on fire, and uh, I could feel it, and I really have this sense of urgency, like our days are really numbered. And, uh, you know, just like it, uh, the barbarians are coming through the borders, and we're at the point now we're inviting them in. Have we ever seen anything like this? Not now, here's the question. Why do you call them barbarians? Well, that's from the Bible. You know, the barbarians were coming through. It was the Assyrians. It was uh, the Babylonians. The, um, uh, who were the other ones? The, uh, the But aren't, aren't all people equal? And aren't all religions equal? Yeah, oh, yes, of course. That's, uh, you know, that's the crony uh, socialist pers perspective. And, uh, you know, just to tie it back to that, I mean, I really see you as, as a modern-day prophet, not a General Washington, because there's, you know, there's really no army for you. I hope it comes. <laughs> That's true. I am no Washington. I am not a soldier. I'm not a statesman. I'm a, I'm a different thing than that. Different entity than a soldier or a statesman. But you are a prophet, and, you know, there is something very special coming to you. Like you just said, uh, somebody up there likes you. Yeah, somebody really likes you, and uh, you are our modern-day prophet. You know, you make so many great points in the book, and, and I refer to this book now as you – I know you said it was your last book that you'll write, uh, and I say it's the last book for Western civilization because this is oh, – wait. Now, wait a minute, book. Jeremiah. How did you get a copy of, of Government Zero? It's not even in the stores yet. I spoke to you a couple of weeks back. I'm the guy who was trained as a Marxist, so. Uh, oh, oh, so uh, so people who win books on this show are getting them before the bookstores. That's intriguing. I just got it. That's amazing. You're a former Marxist who saw the light. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. And now you know. What? Now I'm seeing we're in we're in really big trouble. And and you know again I bow down. How can your fellow Marxists be so blind as to dissolve the nation in which they live? How can they not see what they're doing? Hold on, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. When I take over in this country, the rich are going to pay their fair share. And not only will they pay their fair share, but I am certain that others will pay their fair share as well, especially those who have any money and anything they've achieved. They must pay their fair share because nobody has earned anything in this country not on, except it was on the back of others. And so I think a minimum tax rate for those making more than $10,000 a year should be at least 98%, and I would make it graduated so people should not say that I'm unfair. Anybody making more than 20000 a year should pay 99%. Any, anybody making 50000 up must pay 100% of their, of their income as taxes. She said, how are they going to live if they pay 100% of taxes? My answer is simple. Let them live like the others have lived with nothing. Let them go on welfare, food stamps. Let them see what it's like. I want fairness. I want equality in this society. And therefore, I think that fair, fair taxes are the fairest way to go. And 100% is fair enough for anyone making over 50000 a year. And as far as the millionaires and the billionaires, I tax them at 150%. So how are they going to live? Because they got plenty put away. They could sell their houses, they could sell the yachts, they could sell the cars, and uh, they could empty the bank account. So 150% up to 10 million, 300% if you make more than $20 million, and then we'll have fairness in America. I would also take all of the street people from uh, Black Lives Matter. Right, that, that's, and that's someone you know imitating the street lunatic Bernie Sanders. It was a big hit last week when I was in the mood to do it. If you've been listening for the last two hours and you leave us now, I thank you for listening. Remember, Government Zero has all the answers. All profits go to the 2016 Savage Scholarship Fund. For those of you who are with us another hour, I have some, I have some important breaking news. Be here or be nowhere. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation. One thing you have to understand is that the left invents grievances before they even exist. 
I know that there's a complex set of words that requires a little thought. Because when you break out of the malarkey of radio, you don't even know what I'm talking about. But you can write it down. The left invents grievances before they even exist. So before we've even taken in any more Syrian refugees already, they're inventing a grievance that we're racists because we haven't taken in at least 100,000 Syrian refugees. Already Senator Dick Durbin. Uh, here's another one. This one is from the uh, so-called, uh, who is she from? We need to take in more Syrian Muslims. Uh, Brittany Nystrom of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Center. Now, how many of the Syrian refugees are Lutherans? Answer, none. So you say, well, why would Lutherans want to bring them in? Well, it's of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Center. That has nothing to do with the church. It's a business. So they're using a church to promote the business. Trips, meals, perks. When are you going to understand <laughs> that all those calling for more refugees are making money off it one way or the other? Because the average American knows better. And trace the money. Ask Durbin what he's making on the call to accept 100,000 refugees. Ask him what he's going to make off that deal. Then find out who runs all the, all the services and whether they donate money to him. I don't know if they do. For the fiscal year beginning October, the United States has promised taking 10,000 refugees. That number is woefully inadequate, said Brittany Nystrom of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Center. Durbin wants 100,000. Before we know it, Al Husseini may want a million. We don't know what Al Husseini may do tomorrow. He may wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Al Husseini first night said 10,000. Next morning, Al Husseini said 20,000. Next morning, he said 100,000. Al Husseini could wake up tomorrow and say a million. We don't know. There's no opposition party. Maybe Jimmy Carter. I thought Jimmy Carter was dying of cancer a few months ago when his book came out. Did you notice that when the book came out, he had cancer? Now he's still giving speeches. I'm glad. I wish you know what the cure is. Maybe peanut skins, something. Could be peanut skins, billy beer, something. I'd love to know what he uses. Maybe it's the strychnine they use with the snakes. I don't know. So let's start with some of the sound that we have for you. Here is Bernie Sanders in 1985 boasting about how good life was under Fidel Castro in clip number six. You're not going to believe it, but you're better. Here it is. You may recall way back in, when was it, 1961, they invaded Cuba. And everybody was totally convinced that Castro was the worst guy in the world. All the Cuban people were going to rise up in rebellion against Fidel Castro. They forgot that he educated their kids, gave them health care, totally transformed the society. You know, not to say that uh, Fidel Castro or Cuba are perfect. They are certainly not. But just because Ronald Reagan dislikes these people does not mean to say that the people in their own nations feel the same way. No. They're killed or they were put in prison. That's all. Bernie, you're such a schmuck that only in America could a schmuck like you get as far as you have. Bernie is the kind of schmuck that everyone in New York knows. Anyone living outside of New York who once lived in New York met schmucks like Bernie. They were the losers. They were the schleps. They were the guys who couldn't get the girls. They were the guys who had no cars. They were the guys who everyone laughed at. They were the guys who, when they got older, would come to a a family gathering and grab someone's lapel and jab the, uh, with the other finger in the chest and give them a spritzel job, lecturing them on the, on the wonders of Fidel Del Castro or Marxism or income redistribution while spritzing them. They, let, uh, they had chopped liver breath all the time, even when they weren't eating chopped liver. They smelled like chopped liver coming out of the mouth and they wouldn't let you go. They held a lapel, jabbed you with the other hand and spritzed you. And you had little flakes of chopped liver in your eyes when they got through with you. That's Bernie Sanders. You want him for the presidency? Wow. It just shows you how drug the nation is. But anything could happen. I wouldn't be shocked if he beats Hillary in the primary. Well, she owns the uh, delegates. The delegates are like cattle futures to her. She bought them a long time ago. <laughs> Put that on Twitter for me. Savage says Hillary owns the Democrat delegates. They're like cattle futures to her. She bought them a long time ago. That's a good Twitter. That's the tweet that'll go around the, the Twitter universe pretty quickly. 855-407-282 is the phone number for hour number three. 8 to 5 5, or 400 to 7, I don't know the number. 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-407-282. No, it doesn't matter what Bernie gets. Bernie's doing good. You know what kind of book deal is in this for him after this? The world according to Bernie. He's got lecture circuit for the rest of his life. 
He's a rock star of the drug addicts. He's a rock star 